Today we talked about um, uh, following on from the uh, studies we first published about five years ago, which were looking at a chemical tag on the DNA called DNA methylation, which essentially acts to turn genes on and off. Uh, and uh, five years ago we published some studies showing that there's increased amounts of um, uh, DNA methylation on a gene called ANC1, uh, as well as other changes in DNA methylation across the entire genome. And so since then, um, We've been publishing, and others as well, a number of studies which have shown alterations on other genes and also trying to look into ANC1 in a bit more detail to try and identify why uh, I suppose the changes are so robust and consistent. So we see changes in ANC1 across every single brain cohort we've looked at. People with Alzheimer's disease in uh, post-mortem brain samples see increased amounts of DNA methylation in the ANC1 gene in individuals with Alzheimer's disease, and we see an association. So with increased disease severity as measured by Brock stage, we see increased amounts of DNA methylation. Um, and what we've done more recently is we've gone on to show that it's not just DNA methylation that's increased. We also see reductions in other DNA modifications, so DNA hydroxymethylation. And we've also gone on to show if this is specific to just Alzheimer's disease. So we've also shown we see it in Huntington's disease and in, to a lesser extent maybe in Parkinson's disease. Interestingly, when we looked at people with uh, dementia with Lewy bodies or vascular dementia, we actually see that... Um, there's only increased amounts of DNA methylation on this gene if uh, people have coexisting Alzheimer's pathology. If they actually have pure dementia with Lewy bodies or pure vascular dementia, they actually have no changes in this gene at all. At the moment, we're trying to disentangle the relationship between DNA methylation and phenotype. So, um, what you know, what the levels of gene expression are. It's a very complicated gene. It's got. 10 different transcript variants um, and we need to work out what degree of alternative splicing there is of the gene uh, and also it's cellular specificity so all the studies we've done we've looked at bulk tissue but actually it's really important to start to look at like single cell uh, and populations of cells to work out which cell type might be driving these changes. So we're following up, uh, we're hoping to look at the protein, also do some more work on the, on the gene expression level as well. We're also now starting to move into more cell-based models, so where we can start to do epigenetic editing to try and artificially increase methylation within the cells and see what effect that has on the cell's phenotype. Uh, one of the issues when you're doing epigenetic studies as opposed to genetic studies is we don't know which ones are, whether the epigenetic change is a cause or a consequence of the disease, and hopefully these cell-based assays will help us to address that.